Part two, tearing down a Tascam 488 Mark One. That's the cream one, not the grey one. Well, that's kind of grey, but it's more like, it's a lighter shade of grey. It was a lighter shade of grey. You're welcome. Right, let's see for argument control B has a problem and you want to solder it. What do we disconnect? Well, there's two cables here. I'm going into the DBX, I think. Well, they're going that way anyway. You can pull them out with your fingers. This is blue and white cable, bit of tape holding it down, but it's going into this sync switch PCB over here. And at that point, there are one, two of these plastic clip divider thingies that you need to pinch with a pair of pliers so that they will become narrow enough to pass through the board. Then that comes away like so. And that exposes your slow blow fuses. So if you've got some problem with no power and um, it seems like this transformer is okay, then you can get in there and change those over. Maybe that'll fix your problem. But let's say it doesn't. And we need to get this out. What do we need to detach in that case? Well, there's more cables coming from over here. So this one's going to come out from under some cable ties here and unplug here and then this cable is sending all sorts of power over to the record and playback because as you can see from biggest capacitors there that's obviously a bridge reg to fire as is that so you can tell that although it's labeled as control B it's doing some power conditioning stuff here as well and then this cable here is going along to three voltage regulators here which I haven't checked but I imagine that's your 5 volt 12 volt and what's the other one 10 volt usually I think for off amp so like 5 volts LEDs LCDs display kind of thing 12 volts is for your motors and 10 volts positive and negative either side of an op amp to give it power what I suggest you do is you write the color beside the voltage regulator but leave the voltage regulator in situ some models there's some thermal paste between the voltage regulator and the metal plates they're attached to some there isn't I don't want to disturb that in case there is paste there so as long as you've written with a marker pen or something and that you know white goes there yellow goes there red goes there and you can remove those when you reattach them you see there's this like polarized switch polarized just means that there's a kind of little rampart thing so if you're putting this into a molex header then you can turn it the wrong way around this you can turn it the wrong way around so if you've got the two little square legs pointing out the way that's the wrong way around and so if you plug this back in and it doesn't turn on then flip those over so that these little sharks gill bits are pointing up the way. Now I've already partly detached this but we've got one, two, three, four, five screws that would be holding this in place. I've only got two of them left and uh, notice as well there's this tiny little daughter board for earth just with some resistors and a few different earth cables here and that little daughter board just goes into the corner here. I'm not sure if that's in the US model but this is a EU slash UK model. Oh, I beg your pardon I haven't actually disconnected the transformer from this board. Now at this point the only thing that's connecting that to the rest of the machine is this little daughter board's connected to a couple of ground connections so let's unscrew that. And you can see that there's actually two cables here. I've been in contact with a guy in the States who has one of these open and the ground layout on the US models is slightly different, but here at the UK one, we've got like a little short ring connector to ring connector joining these two heat sink plates. And then that same ring connector and this one joining this tiny daughter board, both going through this tab that's going to the shield for under here and connecting it to this plate here. So it's just a system for making sure that the largest metal regions which are acting as relative ground in the circuit like the metal casing for this transformer and these two heatsink plates are all joined up. When I got this there was one wire loose. It looked to me like it was joining 
earth up some other part of the system here. I've actually taken a bit of a guess about where it goes. So if when you open yours, there's a long cable going from this tiny daughter board somewhere over here, uh, but not there. Trust where it's placed in your unit because I have yet to establish that that's the correct place. What I'll do is if I hear a buzz, then I'll start connecting that different places and see if I can get rid of any background hum. At that point, that's going to come away completely. The screws that were holding that down were here, 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 and here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Oh yeah, one central one there as well. So seven screws holding that down. You can see there's um, metal shielding underneath. If you wanted to get this metal plate up completely for cleaning purposes or whatever, then the only thing that's holding that down now is there's another earth wire going through a ring terminal connected to this transformer and that's going through this plate into plastic mounting post but I don't see any reason to remove that for the purposes of this video. Moving on, we've got this little daughter board here and that's got your, I think that's the DBX on and off, the sink on and off and your sink in and sink out sockets. It's actually connected by three screws here but I've only got two of them in just to make it slightly easier to take this apart in front of your very eyes. You can see that that's got two connections. One's going down and underneath, and that's switching in and out the TBX. And then this one, oh, that's stiff. Yeah, but that'll be sucking, what is it, track eight on this? Uh, I'll probably make a video about using this at some point, so we'll refer to that, but I think it's track eight that you can say, I'm gonna make that for synchronization information and only work with the other seven tracks. But anyway, that will be turning that track into a sync track rather than an audio track. That's what that kit will be doing. That leaves us with this record playback board here. You can tell it's record playback board because it's got this big erase oscillator on it. And you can also see these Matsu Shita, Matsushita, these are relays. So that's changing whether that segment of your magnetic play record head is working in play or record mode. Sometimes the bias oscillators for recording and the, I'm not sure which of those they are, they're pretty similar looking. I don't need to be op amps to do with uh, recording and playback. But it looks somewhat familiar to what I've seen in other machines. Anyway, that's got one, two, three, four, five screws with big washers on them. Now I've written on them FL because I was having a brain fart when I first took this apart and I decided that those things were called flanges and not washers. I don't know why I thought that. Yeah, if you're taking this apart, leave notes to yourself as you go along with a Sharpie. And uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that you're removing. I guess the washers there just to make sure that that remains flat. Just two of the five still in there. So the only other thing that's holding this attached to the plastic base is from the corner of a bit of shielding here that we will expose in a minute. That's ending in a ring terminal and it's joining to this heat sink plate here, which is acting as ground. If you move that, then this is completely detached, except below it, you've got the DBX board. The way that detaches. So you have rings one, two, three, four, five of these pins. These are the sort of plastic spacer pin guys that I was pinching with pliers earlier to get the control A board out. So pinch those and push them through. And then there's also these three connectors so you can see how these are passing through the board and into these I don't know what you call that reverse sockets but basically the pins come into them from underneath the other electrical connection are these sort of ribbon cables here they can be removed I would advise that you don't see how I'm pulling out a cap there and then you'd get a flathead screwdriver and get each of the wires in these individual wires of the ribbon cable. Use a flathead screwdriver to make the little sort of spring things inside it release their grip. But I always find that after I do it that it's really difficult to get these back in again. 
um, I tend not to open these. And if I do open them, then I usually replace them with JST plugs. Like that's an example of a JST plug. So I use a crimping tool and put that on because that can be easily removed in and out a hundred times. And you're not going to worry about the electrical connection, but I find these things a nightmare. So leave them in situ. But if you needed to look at or solder that board there, then you could just leave it open the book style. That just leaves us with the transformer here. That can be detached if you're having a problem with it. I don't think I'll do that. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws to do that. One of the things that's kind of nice about this model compared to say the 464 and the 44 Mark II is with both of them I'm always worried I'm going to have a muscle spasm and touch the exposed live and neutral cables and give myself a lethal electric shock whereas uh, those exposed wires are down here in the PCB uh, yeah so I, I can't touch that and do myself a mischief. Also the weight of the transformer is supported by this kind of metal casing rather than the PCB itself. So that's more robust. I've shown before how on the 44 Mark II, that's a bit of an Achilles heel of that model um, because the weight of the transformer is being supported by the PCB and the PCB can crack. Come back for part three when I take apart the mixer.